Assassin's Creed Shadows, originally due out November 15th, 2024, was very suddenly delayed to February 2025. What followed was a pretty striking memo from Ubisoft that announced some significant changes to the company going forward. Changes that are much needed, in my opinion. It's obviously hard not to be a little cynical about the delay of Assassin's Creed Shadows. On one hand, the company delayed the game to next year to make sure it launches in an optimal state, which is good. That's something that should be standard across the games industry, but, you know, quarterly revenue reports, shareholders, and yeah, yeah, you've heard all that before. However, Ubisoft isn't doing this out of the goodness of their own hearts, even with all the language in there of putting gamers first and all that jazz. No. Ubisoft has no choice at this point to do anything other than improve their business, as quite a few of their major releases have underperformed, their stock price has taken a big hit, and they struggled with negative PR across multiple delays, cancellation, and poor game launches. The memo revealed that Star Wars Outlaws has underperformed in sales, which has been a trend for most big Ubisoft releases as of late. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora was discounted just 12 days after release. Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown didn't light up the sales charts, and of course there's Skull and Bones. The less said about that one the better, but if Steam charts is any indication, things aren't smooth sailing there despite the game continuing to push forward with its seasonal model. Now, I'm no stock expert, but when you look at the chart for Ubisoft's share price, well, I'm pretty sure that line is going in the wrong direction. Maybe I'm ready for Wall Street with that in mind. Thankfully, the memo does include some really good decisions on Ubisoft's part that indicate they're getting serious about things. The one detail that will probably make most players happy in the immediate future, at least on PC, is the return of their games to Steam on day one. Ubisoft has been frequently criticized for forcing players into their terrible Uplay launcher for all of their games, which has undoubtedly hurt their reach in sales. Just like with the Epic Games Store, Many will just wait to purchase the games they want until they make their way to Steam. The second big important detail is that Ubisoft is looking to restructure their Season Pass model. We don't know the full extent of that just yet, but the memo states that all players will have access to the game at the same time, and those who have pre-ordered the game will get the first expansion for free. This is another good move, as I personally find the price gouging for people to play these games a few days early to be one of the worst monetization trends the industry is going through right now. Well, that's a bigger topic for another day. Especially when those early launches players paid for don't even work correctly. Star Wars Outlaws players on PS5 literally had to delete their save files and restart the game after a patch was put out before launch that corrupted those files. Ubisoft is at a critical juncture right now as its stock price has plummeted, their games are underperforming, and it feels like sentiment with the company from the gaming audience in general is at an all-time low. So how did they get here? I personally think the main culprit of their issues comes from their completely out of whack ambitions chasing a huge Fortnite level live service success story. Other culprits like their games getting bigger, but not better, multiple company wide controversies, loss of talent through layoffs, and subsequent technically muddied game launches have contributed as well. If you look back at the past 5 years of Ubisoft, it's littered with failed live service launches and cancellations, including games that were worked on for years, close to being finished even, and never made it out the door. Oddly enough, if you had asked me a few years ago, I would have said Ubisoft was one of the companies handling its live service games quite well, despite rocky launches for most of them. Rainbow Six Siege, For Honor, The Division, and The Crew are all running strong and have been very well supported. Albeit not without technical and monetization issues that spring up with just about every live service game that exists. For the most part, the shared story behind those games is that they're all their own thing and didn't chase live service trends. Or in the case of The Division, chased the trend and did it very well compared to many of its peers. But after 2020, Ubisoft decided to go all in on live service, and if you follow the money graph, that's where the downward trajectory quickly picked up in pace. Hyperscape launched and was shut down, Ghost Recon Frontlines was announced after 4 years of development, and the reaction online was so terrible that the game was cancelled. Roller Champions was released, failed to gain a sustainable player base, and its live service plans were quickly shuttered. Project Q, another take on the Battle Royale genre, cancelled. The Division Heartland was literally in closed beta testing before being cancelled. And I doubt Skull and Bones will see a second year of content once it's finished up with its initial season pass plans. According to Insider Gaming, there were up to a dozen Battle Royale games alone in development at Ubisoft, most of which have been cancelled. The company doesn't leave much to the imagination regarding how much money has been spent on chasing the live service Golden Goose, and ultimately coming up with very little to show for it beyond their initial success in the space. 
And let's not forget other endeavors like Ubisoft Quartz, in which they tried to implement NFTs into Ghost Recon Breakpoint, or their partnership with DoubleJump.Tokyo to make some blockchain game called Champions Tactics Grimoria Chronicles. Whatever the hell that is. Their major franchises like Assassin's Creed have continued to sell well, with Valhalla specifically being the first game in the series to cross $1 billion in revenue. However, this was likely bolstered by the game indulging in the live service model with the season pass for expansions and microtransactions. Despite the sales success, online sentiment around Valhalla wasn't overwhelmingly positive. The game was a bloated mess with a lot of repetitive content across a world that was more focused on being large than actually interesting to play in. And that's kind of been Ubisoft's MO for the past half decade. A company that's gotten way too big, way too formulaic, and constantly chasing trends. Trends that they used to set, for better or worse. Despite all the doom and gloom surrounding Ubisoft, I'm actually mildly optimistic about their current direction. Prince of Persia The Lost Crown was an absolute delight to play, and I'm hoping it gets a second win in sales as I, and others on the team, firmly believe it was one of Ubisoft's best releases in years. I found Avatar Frontiers of Pandora to be generally enjoyable, despite not selling well and being very by the numbers. While vast, the game utilizes its open world well with fun traversal and a story that doesn't overstay its welcome. I'm currently making my way through Star Wars Outlaws, and though it hasn't exactly blown me away either, it feels like another step in the right direction for Ubisoft when it comes to keeping their game's scope in check, focusing on quality and not quantity. Interestingly, Assassin's Creed Mirage didn't generate much attention online, but actually sold in line with Assassin's Creed Origins and Odyssey. Mirage was much smaller in scope, and a return to basics for the Assassin's Creed formula. The marketing in particular for Assassin's Creed Shadows has also been quite tonally different from what they've done in the past. Ubisoft has been less focused on the scale of the world or adding bloat through shallow RPG mechanics, and more focused on specific gameplay enhancements like reintroducing stealth, dynamic lighting, and changing seasons that affect how you even traverse the world. It's a small thing obviously, and we haven't gotten our hands on the game yet, so who knows if Shadows will be any good. But as someone that pays attention to lots of video game marketing as my job, I've definitely noticed a difference in how Ubisoft is talking about their recent projects lately, which is just a small indicator to me of a company changing direction. Couple that with the shelving of many in-development live service projects, games with their scope in check, and the memo at the start of this video, and Ubisoft seems at a cursory glance to be starting to make changes out of necessity to transition back to the company that put out games like Far Cry 3, Assassin's Creed 2, Splinter Cell Blacklist, and many other beloved hits. I'm optimistic about those changes, while remaining wary and cynical that it's taken the company far, far too long to make them. In today's ultra-competitive market, players expect extraordinary experiences and ultra-polished games on day one, said the memo from Ubisoft. I hate to break it to you, Ubisoft, but that has always been the expectation of customers. You just haven't been listening to them. As per usual when I record these scripts, more news broke already via Bloomberg that Ubisoft and Tencent are possibly looking at taking the company private, or a potential buyout. Not much to talk about there just yet, but Ubisoft's next few months leading up to the Shadows launch are going to be quite interesting. Thanks for checking out this episode of Unpacked, and if you enjoy all of our work at Second Wind, maybe consider joining us over on Patreon. Next month is our first birthday already. Somehow. <laughs>